in our first interview with Don Youngpeter, we looked at some of the internet programming languages, talked about them a little bit, and glossed over uh, PHP. Mm -hmm. What's PHP? And I noticed you have a two-core sequence in PHP. Mm -hmm. Well, PHP is a scripting language, once again, that, uh, that's comparable to ASP, Active Server Pages, not so much ASP.NET. Those are two different, uh, actually, languages in a sense, uh, that actually develops web-based applications, meaning it takes information off a form on the web, be able to process it, and put information back. We see web-based applications today in things like you know, eBay, Amazon, anything that you do at the school in regards to signing up and registering for classes. Uh, PHP is a, a very popular, once again, uh, language worldwide because it's cross-platform. It can work on Unix, Linux, Solaris, Windows, et cetera, et cetera, okay? It can even work on the native operating system of an IBM i-series. So much so, IBM is considering purchasing PHP and making it one of its sole languages for its actual platform. PHP is very popular. Uh, there's been you know, a little roller coaster on its popularity, but if you go out there and research PHP, you'll see it's still one of the probably top five languages used globally. So we're excited it's in our program, uh, and I'm excited it's in Don's program. So with that said, it's, 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 a, it's a unique language to do that. It's not the only one we deal with, but it's a unique language uh, to deal with when I say web applications, but it's one we want our students to understand and know. And the last of this uh, alphabet soup of high-level languages that we have is C++. Mm -hmm. uh, appears to be a strong tract of that in the software engineering technology program. I think Mr. Yelton's uh, interview kind of gave us a little insight as to why that might be there, but can you give us more detail about mm -hmm. C? Well, again, what we kind of talked about before with those languages is the fact that uh, C and C++ are languages that were derived or defined, if you will, uh, mainly before system type engineering, defining operating systems or those types of applications and so on. C was uh, defined back in 1970s by Bell Labs uh, primarily just for that. Now, business applications have been written in this type of language, uh, yet primarily it was done for those types of things. Um, C++, on the other hand, was written in about 1983, I believe it was uh, completed, again by Bell Labs, with the whole idea around improving upon C, making it a little bit easier than C, and making it a little bit more maintainable and reusable than C. The whole concept of making it object-oriented. C++ was one of the first object-oriented languages defined. Um, with that, once again, those languages are used primarily to write sophisticated applications. I mean, even a lot of uh, the things you see in Windows, uh, like Word, Excel, and so on, are all defined by C++ or written in C++. So those types of languages really lends itself very nicely to SET, which, dis which deals with you know, systems type engineering, uh, operating systems, and so on, more sophisticated science type programming, computer science type programming. So uh, we feel strongly about those languages, and we're happy that we're teaching them here at Cincinnati State. Okay, so Visual Basic, Java, C+, RPG, PHP, we teach a lot of programming languages to our students. Uh, is there a reason? Um, when a student walks in, usually the first day, into one of my programs or one of my classes, one of the things I want students to understand is about programming languages. What are they? Why is there so many of them? Which ones should we learn? Um, what's going to get me a job tomorrow? That's what their main concern is. And my answer to them is that languages are tools. Okay, tools to an end. Uh, I, I always draw the analogy of building a house, you know. Uh, you have your saws, you have your screwdrivers, you have your hammers and so on to make something. However, we have to have the idea of what we're headed toward. What is it we're trying to solve? And uh, hopefully, through your experience here at Cincinnati State and any of our programs, we're helping you s be problem solvers. The tools that you use, eh, I don't want to say make, doesn't make a difference, but in a lot of ways they're used based upon the application. If I have a set of screwdrivers, usually people don't buy one screwdriver, they set a whole kit of screwdrivers. They're all used based upon the application and what you're using for. So based upon what you want to do in your career, uh, you learn certain languages. But I don't want people to fret over what languages they're learning. I want people to understand how to solve a problem, how to take the tools to implement a solution to that problem. And what these people are going to find, our students are going to find, is once you start doing that with one language, maybe, maybe two or three languages you might learn here at Cincinnati State, you can start applying that to the rest of your career and be able to learn new languages over and over again based upon what you're doing and where your career takes you. 
I've been doing this now for 30 years. I started off as an assembler COBOL programmer, learned Fortran, learned Pascal, learned uh, all kinds of languages. After a while, I started learning how to learn these languages myself because primarily they do just about the same things. So if, you, if our students can get a core sense of languages such as Java or the C's, that whole derivative of a Unix-based system, .NET, BASIC, SQL being another language that actually queries databases and so on, they have the foundation to be able to do anything and everything for the rest of their career and move on. The core is, or the understanding should be, how do you solve problems? And I hope everybody who instructs here at Cincinnati State is helping our students solve those problems. The tools will take care of themselves. That completes our set of interviews. We've looked at computer programming and database management, software engineering technology, and business information systems. And I think I have a much better understanding about what the differences are between those programs and also where there are some similarities and overlaps. Uh, but more importantly, probably in this particular week of study, we, want to, we wanted to look at the graduation requirements in terms of the technical core areas. And I think that you'd have to agree, we certainly do have a better understanding now of what a database is and what courses we teach, what internet programming is all about, what high-level languages are and why we teach them, uh, what math and science courses are required in, in different majors and why some vary in terms of the, the number. Uh, that's week three's purpose, and uh, hopefully these videos have helped you understand them. Thank you.